Greetings folks, Lance here. Well, now that we have the EG4 6000EX-48HV inverter unpacked, we are going to prep it for installation. And first of all, we're going to install the handles. Now, personally, I am probably not even gonna use these, but I'm gonna install them anyway. And it's just a matter of four Phillips bolts attaching on each side at the top here, on each side. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick and then we'll get to the next step. Now that we have the two handles installed, we are going to remove this bottom section right here in order to gain access to the interior where there's a third location for anchoring the, the inverter. So there's apparently, uh, looks like four Phillips screws, one here and then on the opposite side, another here and another here. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this off. Now that we've removed the four screws, as we slide this off, we'll notice that there is an RJ45 connector right here. And we're just gonna pop that off, which will allow us to remove the entire module. And then we'll see down here at the bottom, there's our third anchoring location, that hole right there. Next up, we're gonna do our layout for where we are going to place the inverter or inverters. In this case, I'm gonna have two, one here and one here, as I mentioned in the previous video. Take the time to really do the math, lay things out, draw your lines. The amount of time that you put into this will save you a lot of hassle moving forward. But as you can see, I've already installed the two hanging bolts. These are anchored back into the block behind this is a tile backer board here this is very common to use in such installations as a fire guard and they come in really good sizes three by five so it ends up being a pretty good size now You're probably going to want to do the math on your actual inverter bracket. It seems like they have possibly different sizes. So I don't want to give you my numbers, have you assume it's going to be correct, but just take some measurements off your inverter bracket, the hanging bracket, and get these set way they're they're solid this goes this is a three inch this is way back into the block give yourself enough gap here to hang on to and then from there it's probably a two-man job but you just want to make sure that you give yourself the clearances noted here in the manual 26 20 inches on top 20 on the bottom eight on the right and left so do your layout, make sure you got enough tolerances. They specifically state that this is to allow for heat dissipation. You know, give yourself enough space, that way there's good airflow coming through here. And then you're probably gonna want some help to hang it. You wanna make sure it's high enough because the display is on the bottom. So we wanna make sure that we place the inverter high enough that this is at eye level or close. So th that'll get it pretty close to eye level. So like I said, you may wanna get some help, but I'm gonna see if I can get this up myself. Um, it, it's somewhere around 75 pounds. It's not light, but not nearly as heavy. <laughs> as the outback power I'm, I'm pretty sure this thing was over 100 pounds so um i'm gonna go ahead and see if i can get this hung up here 
Okay, that wasn't too bad. I thought I was going to just heft it up there, but I ended up using a small step ladder, which is a, a little hairy, but I, I was just very careful, managed to get it up there. So now it is hung on these two concrete bolts here, but I'm not going to tighten it down yet. Now maybe you're a little bit better at getting these bolts perfectly level, but after getting it hang, hung, it's just a little off as far as being plumb. So when I anchor, when I anchor this third one here, I'm gonna use this lag. I'm gonna push it over to get it plumb before I drive this in. Now that it's plumb with the lag bolt, now we're gonna go ahead and tighten, tighten up these upper ones here. All right, I think that'll do it for this step of the process.